Hey, what's good guys? Today we're going to be starting a new tutorial series on how to make an RTS game in Unreal Engine 4. In today's episode, we will be implementing basic camera controls that respond to both input keys and when the player's mouse is at the edge of the screen. And this will also work when the screen size is changed. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Unreal Engine 4 and go to new project at the top here. Blank. Desktop console. Maximum quality. No starter content and then save it wherever you like and give it a name. We'll call it RTS Tutorial. And then create project. Okay guys, once you've opened the project, you'll be greeted with a scene like this. Um, to begin, we're going to make the plane a bit bigger as we're gonna be moving the camera around a lot. So we're gonna want to not fall off the edge of the map. So we'll make it a scale of X100 and a scale of Y100. And now you can see that we've got all this plane to play with. There's one thing I'm going to need to show you guys before we carry on further and create the character inputs. And that's that the axes, when you're looking from a top-down perspective between X and Y, are flipped almost. Because the X axes will be going vertically in a vertical direction and the wire axes will be going in a horizontal direction. It's not an issue, there are many workarounds, but for this tutorial we're going to be just using the X axis controls for the Y axis and the Y axis controls for the X axis and it'll work perfectly fine. Now that that's out of the way, if you want to go to settings and then go to project settings and then on the left you can click input and axes mapping if we click the little plus next to it twice we'll create two new axes mappings rename the first one um, move x axis and we'll rename the second one move y axis now we want to bind the input keys for the axes mappings so for the x axis we want to put w and we also want s because we're switching the controls between x and y that would be standard and then there we go and then for s we'll give it a scale of minus one so that it's opposite to w and then we'll also want d for move y axis and we'll also want a for ma uh, move y axis and we'll want a to be also a negative scale so that it moves in the opposite direction again now we can go back to the level editor window and we can go down to the content uh, folder at the bottom and right click new folder and we'll call this one character and we'll go into this folder and we'll right click and we'll create a new blueprint class here and we'll click that and then we'll click pawn and we'll call this RTS character once we've done that we can open up the RTS character once in the character we can add a new component and we'll add a camera and click enter and we'll add another component, we'll add a floating pawn movement and this will control the movement of the character so if you want to change any way the character moves you can do it in the floating pawn movement details but we're going to edit the camera now so we'll click on it and we'll rotate it on the Y axis by minus 90 we do this so that it will be facing down in game and we'll be able to see any units that we want to control and that's all we need to do in the viewport window. So if we go to the event graph, we can delete all of these nodes. And we can right click and we can type move X axis and go on the axis event. And then we'll create a branch by holding B and left clicking. We'll drag that into there. And from the axis value, we'll create a float equals. And we'll select that. And if the float is equal to zero, then that means there is, the axis value is currently zero, which means we will add a movement input. But if it's false, then we'll drag off and we'll add movement input. And we'll make the world direction one in the x axis. And we'll drag the axis value into the scale value. So if s is being pressed, then that will give a negative value and the scale value will be the opposite of the x world direction. So we want to come down here. We want to right click and we want to move Y axis, axis event. And we'll, we can go back to the top and we can copy and paste all of this. And we can link it up, drag that in there and the axis value into the float equals. 
and the axis value into the scale value of the add movement input and change the x axis world direction to zero and the y axis to one now if we click ctrl shift s to save everything it will want us to save the level so we'll right click new folder and we'll call it levels and we'll save the level in here and we'll call the level level one and we can click save now we can head back into the level editor window and we can go down to the character folder and we can right click new blueprint class because we want to create a game mode and we'll select game mode base and we'll call it rts game mode we can now double click this to go inside it and we'll select the default pawn as rts character now if we go we now while we're at it, we'll go into the event graph and we'll get rid of the event tick and from the event begin play we will right click we'll untick context sensitive and we'll search uh, show mouse cursor there it is and we'll select set show mouse cursor and we'll connect the event begin player to this and for the target we'll want the player controller so we'll get player controller and we'll drag that in and then we shall select show mouse cursor as true and now we can compile and go back into the level editor window we can go into world settings on the right and as game mode override we'll drag in the rts game mode into there and now if we click play we should be able to see the plane and move the character with the wsd keys and we can press we can mix and match them so that we can move in diagonal directions now once that's done we'll want to add the mouse control so that the character can move when the mouse is at the edges of the screen just like in any other rts game so we'll go back into the rts character now we can set up the mouse controls to move the camera this will be a bit more complex than before and it'll involve a bit of math so i'll try to explain it the best i can you, it does help if you understand it but it doesn't matter if not because it'll still work the same way the reason for the maths is that we want a scale value for the add movement input so that it moves smoothly depending on how far into the edge of the screen the mouse is for this we'll want to create a function so if we come over here to the left of the screen and we go over to functions and we press the plus arrow we'll create one and we'll call it calculate scale and we'll click enter once that's created we'll go over to the right to inputs we'll click add input and we'll call this one mouse axis value and we'll make it a float then we'll add another and we'll call this one viewport axis value and then we'll also add an output and this will be scale and it'll also be a float so we'll compile that and save and if we go into the event graph we can now add some nodes in case the condition is true so we'll add the function in of calculate scale from the left and we'll drag the true condition into there and then off of here we'll add movement input and this time the scale value will be equal to the scale from the function and we will make the world direction one again okay now we'll need to get the mouse axis value and the viewport axis value so we'll right click get player controller drag that to the side a bit and we'll drag off of here get mouse position there we go and because we swapped the input axis controls around earlier we'll do the same for the mouse controls so the mouse axis value will be equal to the mouse location y and now we can right click get viewport size and we can right click on this value and split struct pin this is to get the x and the y value we only want the y value so we'll drag that into viewport axis value and now if we go back to the function either at the top or on the left we can click it here uh, we'll disconnect the return node by alt clicking we'll move that to the right to give us a bit more space we'll start by creating a branch by holding b and left clicking and we'll move the return node a bit further away and we'll want to create a condition for the branch so if we right click and we search float greater than and we want to find out if the mouse axis value is greater than 90% of the viewport value 
So this will find out if it's in the above the 90th percentile of the screen. So we'll get float times float. And we'll times it by 0 0.9. And then we'll find out if the mouse axis value is greater than this. And then we'll drag that into the branch. And we'll drag in the calculate scale. And now we need to return a scale if it is greater than the 90th percentile of the viewport between 0 and 1. And it will be higher the closer it is to 100%. So we'll drag off the mouse axis value. And we'll do float minus float. So if it's greater than 90%, we'll then minus the 90% from the mouse axis value. So if we drag in the 90% of the viewport axis value into the subtraction. And now we want to get 10% of the viewport axis value. So if we double click there, so we can drag off and we'll type float times float. And we'll neaten this up a bit. And to get 10% of the viewport axis value, we're going to want to times it by 0 0.1. We're now going to use this value to divide the value of the mouse axis value minus the 90% viewport axis value that we made earlier. So if we drag a fair and do float divided by float. And drag that into there. And this will now give us a scale between 0 and 1. So we can drag that into there. And that now we can drag the true condition of the branch into return node. And now we're going to want to create another branch in the case that the mouse axis value is less than 10% of the viewport axis value. So from here we want to create another return node. And we'll drag the true into there. And we'll create another in case it's false that will only return 0. And now we'll need to create the scale value for the second node. So we'll want to right click and type float less than float. And we want to find out if the mouse axis value is lower than 10% of the viewport value. So we'll double click there to get the mouse axis value again and keep it a bit neater. We'll drag that into that. And then we'll drag the 10% of the viewport size into there. And then that can then go into the branch. So that if it is lower than 10% of the viewport value, we know it's at the opposite side of the screen. So from here we'll drag off of the 10% of the viewport axis value and we'll type float divided by float and we will disconnect that pin with alt clicking and now we want to find the value of the mouse axis value divided by 10% of the viewport value as we did before but not minus in 90% of the viewport first so we'll drag this over here and we'll type float add float and we want to add minus 1 so that it reverses the scale value. So if we had a scale value of 0 0.9, it would give us a negative value of 0 0.1. And this is so that it will reverse the world direction of the add movement input node. And now that that's done, our function is complete. So it will return a negative or positive float depending on the axis value. So if we're going to back into the event graph and we zoom out a little bit, we can copy and paste these nodes and paste them down here and we'll just have to change a few things first so if we drag the true condition into the function and we change the world direction to one in the y direction and then we change over the y values to the x values to pass to the function and now that should work perfectly but there is an issue with the beginning x value and that's that the y location of the viewport is calculated from the top left downwards so to make the function work we're going to want to reverse this value but it's easy enough to do if we just right click and do float minus float and then we are going to minus the mouse position y from the viewport size y and then we can drag that into the mouse axis value and that should all work perfectly so now if we control shift s save compile and if we go on edit a window and click play we should find that the when the mouse is put into the edges of the screen that the camera will move and this is how an rts camera typically moves in games and we can use the keys to also move it and that is basically it for today's tutorial and now that that's out of the way in the next episode we can go over tilt in the camera and also zoom in and this is to create a more in-depth character control if the video helped you anyway 
please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps me a lot, especially seeing as I've only just recently started this channel. It helps me get noticed a bit more. And I know the math in today's episode has been a bit awkward. So if you have any questions about that or any other aspect of the tutorial, just leave it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. And that about wraps it up for today. So I'll hopefully see you all in the next episode. So yeah, have a great day, guys.